Hello student, welcome to the one more video session of uh, microcontroller and embedded systems. In this uh, session, I am going to start fourth module of 18 CS 44 syllabus. That is the characteristics and quality attributes of the embedded system. So, if you take any embedded system or any system in general or any non-embedded system, there will be a set of uh, characteristics that will going to describe the system, that will going to define the system. Those things are called as characteristics of the system. But there are also some non-functional as aspects. So those non-functional aspects are called as quality attributes. <coughs> So non-functional aspects are called as quality attributes, functional aspects are called as characteristics of the system. Both are important when you design an embedded system. That means when you design an embedded system, the design should take into the consideration of both functional and non-functional aspects. So what do you mean by functional aspects? That is the characteristics of the system that define the, describe the system. So that describe the system. Then non-functional aspects are the quality attributes. For example, so if you take a motorcycle, if you take, sorry, if you take a bicycle, say so bicycle basically provides transportation service. Like I can say the characteristics of this one is it will provide transportation service. Instead of bicycle, if I consider a bike, it also provides transportation service. So both are the characteristics of that bike and bicycle. Now if you consider the quality of that both service, then a bicycle can go 15 km per hour, but motorcycle can go, I mean a motorbike can go. 80 kilometers per hour. So, service offered by the system is related to the behavior of the system. So, non-functional aspects are related to the behavior of the system. So, quality attributes describes the behavior of the systems than the characteristics. Characteristics defines what type of service offered by the system and the quality attribute describes the behavior of the systems. So when you design an embedded system, you need to consider both functional as well as non-functional aspects. Now, the, now we'll see the characteristics of an embedded system. So embedded system poses certain characteristics. All those characteristics are unique to the embedded system or it is uh, unique to each embedded system based on the domain or applications. So some important characteristics of the embedded systems are application and domain specific. Second one is reactive and real time. Third one is operate, operates in harsh environments. Like not all embedded system, but uh, like some of the embedded systems are operate in a safe and a good environment or good condition. But uh, some of the embedded system operates in harsh environments. Fourth one is the distributed. This is the one of the important characteristics of an embedded system. Sixth, fifth one is small size and small weight. And sixth one is the four concerns. All these are the important characteristics or what you call functional uh, aspects of the embedded system. We need to consider it in the design stage. Now, student, you will see one by one, uh, what are the different types of, I mean one by one, the, uh, the like the ex explanation for one by one uh, characteristics of a embedded system. The first one is uh, application and domain specific. As I said, when you take an embedded system, that embedded system, that embedded system is meant is made to 
perform certain intended function that is means that embedded system is uh, meant, uh, is made to perform cer uh, certain uh, uh, specific task or couple of task it is not made to perform general task like unlike like general system general systems are general systems are made to perform general task but an embedded system uh, like it is made to perform a specific task for example uh, you cannot replace the embedded control unit of your microwave oven actually microwave oven is an example for uh, embedded system which, can, which is based on microcontroller so uh, you cannot replace the control unit of microwave oven with the air conditioner air conditioners embedded control unit see we know the air conditioners embedded control unit is used to control the uh, control the temperature and uh, microwave oven control unit is also used to uh, control the temperature both control the temperature but one is used for uh, eating application other other one is used for a cooling application so you cannot replace uh, the control unit of uh, both each other so uh, so the embedded system is developed to do only intended function that is the meaning of that one next one is uh, next one is uh, reactive and uh, real time actually speaking embedded systems are in constant interaction with the real world through sensors normally sensors are connected to the input of the embedded system uh, input port of the embedded to the uh, of the embedded system and actuators are connected to the output port of the embedded system so in uh, all these sensors will uh, so all these sensors will uh, uh, get uh, like information like uh, get data from the uh, environment uh, depending on the event so event is nothing but any changes happening in the real world that is called as event depending on the event all the sensors will capture the uh, real time data and it will pass the real time data to the microcontroller uh, microcontroller along with the control algorithms and the firmware where uh, which is designed in a manner to bring the controlled output variables to the desired level through actuators control output variable to the desired level or act uh, through uh, through actuators so now uh, i said uh, like uh, this uh, um, uh, the sensors will respond to uh, respond to the uh, changes happening in the real world and that is called event this event can be like uh, periodic one or uh, unpredicted one like embedded system produce changes in the output in response to the changes in the input changes in the input is referred as a reactive system so embedded system which produces the changes in the output in response to the changes in the input are referred as a reactive systems now in real time system operations means timing behavior of the system should be deterministic so what do you mean by deterministic that means deterministic means uh, the system should be able to complete the particular task within the specified amount of time that means that the real, uh, real uh, system should not miss uh, any uh, any deadlines for the task or there should not be any delay while executing any type of task or operations so it is not necessary that all the embedded system should be real time in operations so for example like uh, embedded systems uh, which are used in uh, uh, mission critical application like uh, flight control system anti lock brake systems in uh, uh, automotive engines uh, all these are examples for uh, real time system so the design of the real time system should be in such a way that uh, these real time system should be tested for uh, like uh, worst case best case and average case so what do you mean by the worst case best case and average case that is the, the, the embedded system should be tested for best case also and the worst case worst case means embedded system system should be tested for the uh, not only for uh, uh, like lightly load it should be tested for heavily load heavily load in the sense like uh, uh, that is called as a worst case so that uh, the designer should uh, check whether the embedded system can the component or that particular system can sustain with respect to the uh, environment based on the worst case uh, worst case conditions so the design of embedded system in real time should be worst case scenario consideration so next one is 
the third important uh, call it, uh, this characteristics of embedded system is it operates in the arch environment as i said uh, not all the operate uh, like embedded system operates in the arch environment only some of the system like some of the embedded systems operates in the arch environment but uh, uh, most of the op uh, embedded system operates uh, in the safe and uh, uh, good condition environment now what do you mean by arch environment arch environment in the sense like uh, the embedded systems are deployed in dusty environment or high temperature zone or it uh, the embedded system may be deployed in certain area subject to vibration and sh shock so system placed in such area should be capable to withstand all the adverse operating condition for example the, if the system deployed in high temperature zone then all the component inside the system should be high temperature grade that means uh, all the component used in the system should be temperature uh, like withstand should be temperature withstand so now and one more thing is like uh, here we cannot go for a compromise in cost so when you select the component for critical uh, real time critical systems then we should not go for a comp compromise in cost then uh, power supply and uh, we should also check the uh, check the conditions for power supply fluctu fluctuations uh, and uh, component age if all these things should be considered into uh, like consider in uh, while designing the particular embedded system next one is uh, distributed like the term distributed means that embedded system may be the part of larger system. So many number of uh, distributed embedded system form the single large embedded system. For example, like uh, for example, like we use automatic winding machine. We use automatic winding machine is an example for this one. Is an example for distributed embedded system. The winding machine contains a card reader. We know the function of the card reader. Then uh, winding unit. So both these are combined. Uh, both these are actually independent unit but they but they work together to achieve overall function of the vending machine so now we will go to the other example like another example is like automatic teller machine atm so atm is a atm contains a card reader which is an embedded system other than that uh, uh, the main function of this card reader is to authorize the uh, or validate the uh, users of the atm card then uh, then it contains transaction unit for performing the transaction that is also embedded system then it contains currency counter for dis dispatching the uh, currency to the authorized person and it also contains a printer unit for printing the transaction details so so totally atm is made up of so many different types of embedded systems like it is a it is like like distributed uh, 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 distributed type of a system where all the distributed systems are gathered together to achieve the particular task another type of a typical example of a distributed embedded system is a supervisory control and data equation scada system used in control and instrumentation application which contains physically distributed individual embedded control unit and it is connected to supervisory module these are the different example of a embedded a distributed embedded systems next one is small size and weight See, this is one of the important characteristics of a uh, embedded system. While designing itself, uh, uh, we need to consider as a designer need to consider this uh, this one because people believe believe in uh, praise like small is beautiful and uh, small is uh, like less weight, something like this. So, embedded domain also compactness is a in the embedded domain compactness is a uh, like significant deciding factor. For example, uh, when you buy a mobile phone, you may make comparative study. On the pros and cons, uh, 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 advantage and disadvantage of the product available in the market. Definitely, the product, uh, like product size, weight, shape, style, etc., will be one of the deciding factor. So, most of the application demands small size and low weight products. So, these things need to be considered. Next one is the four concerns. <coughs> Power management is the another factor in the design of the embedded system. So embedded systems are designed in such a way that to minimize the heat dissipation by the system. The production of the high amount of heat demands cooling re requirement. Cooling requirement in the sense like you need to adopt uh, or uh, adopt extra cooling fans which in turn occupies additional space and make the system bulky. So, so it is necessary to while designing stage itself is necessary to consider the ultra low power components. Uh, that need to be used in the design stage so that it will consume 
it will consume less power next next uh, we will move to the quality attribute of the embedded systems so i told you characteristics defines the type of service provided by the embedded system and quality attribute which is also called as non functional attribute which gives about the behavior of the embedded system how the embedded systems will behave uh, the, that is that is provided by the quality attribute that is provided by the quality attribute so coming to quality attributes of the embedded system so quality attributes are non functional requirements so there are functional requirements for the embedded system and non functional requirements for the embedded system functional requirements are the characteristics of embedded system or services of uh, services uh, we can say services uh, provided by the embedded system these are the functional requirement non functional requirements are the are called quality attribute that indicates the how the system behave or it define the behavior of the system so these things need to be documented properly in any system design if the quality attributes are more concrete and uh, measurable they will give positive impact on the system development process and the end product so uh, let me give an example for the quality attribute so like uh, uh, let us call uh, let's we use two atm automatic teller machine so atm1 and atm2 in the atm1 both atm provides same type of service that is both atm can withdraw the money can deposit the money can we do the, uh, can withdraw deposit and uh, we can check the minimum, uh, balance uh, all those things in terms of service it, it, both atms atm1 and atm2 provide the same service but in atm1 after entering the balance for withdrawal it dispenses the cash within 30 seconds but atm2 after entering the balance for the withdrawal it dispenses the cash within 3 minutes like it takes 3 minutes for the dispense of cash and uh, first atm did that in 30 seconds so this is the difference that is the non functional uh, non functional attribute or quality attribute of the two atm so first atm differ in this quality quality wise but the service wise both provide the same service so uh, these quality attributes are further classified as operational quality attribute and non operational quality attributes operational quality attributes uh, are the attribute which is measured when the uh, embedded systems are in working condition or online and non operational quality attributes are measured when the system is under testing or development mode now the operational quality attributes like represents the relevant quality attributes related to the embedded system when it is the operational mode or online mode these are the different types of operational quality attributes like response throughput reliability maintainability security and safety so non operational quality att attributes uh, is measured when the system is under testing or development mode so here the important non operational quality attributes are testability and debuggability availability portability time to prototype and market per unit and total cost these are the different types of uh, quality attributes so let us see now one by one response actually response is a measure of a quick quickness of the system how fast the system responds to the input variable actually embedded system demand fast response which should be almost like real time but all embedded systems response are not uh, equal to real time response an embedded system deployed in flight control application such as 
mission critical applications should respond in a timely manner any response delay in the system will create potential damage to the safety of the passengers as well as safety of the flight so the response time requirement for electronic toy is not all time critical next attribute is a throughput throughput is nothing but the efficiency of the system throughput is defined at the rate of production or operation of defined process over the stated period of time or the amount of work done per unit time that is called as throughput rates can be expressed in terms of units of products so we have examples here like card reader throughput means how many transaction the reader can perform for per minute uh, perform in a minute or we have database server how many transaction that database server can perform if it performs a maximum transaction per minute then the throughput of the data database server is high or we consider the web service server how many web pages it can process per unit uh, time all these uh, are the direct example for the throughput of the system so benchmark is a reference point by which something can be measured benchmark can be set for of a, uh, of a performance criteria now next one is the reliability reliability is one of the important parameter so often it is necessary to understand how reliable is my system like it is a measure of how much percentage you can rely upon the proper functioning of the system or what is the percentage of suspectability of the system to the failure or what are the chances of the system to the failure that is called as reliability so reliability is measured by two parameters that is mean time between failures mtb and mean time to repair so mean time between the failures gives the frequency of failures in terms of hours weeks and months mean time to repair specifies how long the system is allowed to be out of order following the failure after the failure how much the system uh, how much the time is taken for the repair after failure how much the time taken for the repair that is called as mttr mean time to repair so next one is the maintainability maintainability is the one more parameter or the attribute and uh, deals with the deals with the support and maintenance to the end user or client in case of technical issues and product failures so maintainability are associated with the two word like reliability and maintainability both are considered as a complementary uh, like uh, consider as a two complementary disciplines like if the system is more reliable that means it's a, it requires less corrective maintainability and vice versa as the reliability of the system increases uh, there is a chance of failures and non functioning uh, non functioning reduces so maintainability is closely related to the system availability so system availability, availability is depends on uh, uh periodic maintenance that is preventive maintenance and maintenance to the un unexpected failures there are two things one is periodic maintenance second one is maintenance to the unexpected failures now you take a printer printer is a typical example for uh, like uh, illustrating two types of maintainability like print printer contains uh, like if you take the ink inkjet printer it which uses the ink cartridge which are consumable uh, this uh, components as per the uh, guidelines of the manufacturer of the printer like the end user should replace the cartridge after certain number of uh, printouts to get the good quality printouts this is example for scheduled or periodic maintenance second one is the paper printing part of the printer fails then the printer fails to print and it requires immediate repairs that is the exam uh, that is the this is an example of uh, maintenance to unexpected failure so there are two types of uh, this one uh, periodic maintenance and unexpected maintenance so both maintenance either it is scheduled or repair the printer needs to be brought offline and during that time printer is not available so we need to consider one more factor here that is availability 
so we need to express the availability so availability is expressed like empty vf divided by empty vf plus empty tr where empty vf is the mean time between failure and mean time to repair so so by this uh, we decide uh, like the availability factor so availability factor is very important here next one is the security security aspects uh, covers the confidentiality integrity and availability so what do you mean by confidentiality like confidentiality deals with the protection of the data and uh, application from unauthorized person how to protect the data from the unauthorized person integrity means uh, protection of data and application from unauthorized modification how to protect the data so that the data will not get modified from the unauthorized user like if you if you uh, download certain software with virus then it is not like it is it is not having integrity that means the uh, the software is modified uh, with the uh, modified that package is modified with the virus so uh, that is called as integrity and availability is like deals with the protection of data application from the unauthorized user protection of data and application from the other unauthorized user for example if i have a server if the server is not available because of uh, like because of certain type of attack then it is then it is a availability problem so deals with the protection of data and application from the unauthorized user So next one is the safety. Safety and security are the two confusing terms. Sometimes you feel both of them as a single attribute, but they represent two unique aspects. Safety deals with the possible damage that can happen to the operator or the public or environment due to the breakdown of the embedded system or emission of a radioactive or hazards material from the embedded products for example uh, in my previous video i told you uh, i have uh, told about uh, face maker which is the uh, which uh, which you normally used uh, to simulate the heartbeat uh, in uh, uh, cardiac patient if that fails then uh, then that is a threat to the to the human life threat to the human life uh, threat to the human life so uh, all those comes under uh, safety safety deals with the possible damage that can happen to the operator public environment due to the breakdown of an embedded system or a, so breakdown of an embedded system so safety analysis is must in a product engineering to evaluate the anticipated damages and determine the best course of action next one is uh, non operational like operational we have so far we studied about the operational uh, attributes now we will see the non operational the non operational attributes are the attributes uh, which uh, are measured when the system is under particular embedded system is under testing or development so here we have something called as uh, testability and debuggability so for an embedded product testability is the applicable to both embedded hardware and firmware we know embedded system contains hardware as well as firmware embedded hardware testing like ensures that the peripheral and the total hardware functions in the desired manner whereas firmware testing ensures the firmware function in the expected way and debuggability debuggability means debugging of the product as such for figuring out the problem the uh, problem uh, uh, figuring out the four table uh, sorry uh, probable sources that create unexpected behavior in the total system so this is called a debugging ability that means uh, debug of the that particular product uh, like and to find out uh, under particular circumstance uh, how that uh, product works or uh, what type of problem unexpected uh, behavior it shows all those are comes under debugging ability so debugging ability has uh, two aspects in embedded system that is one is hardware level debugging and firmware level debugging so hardware level debugging is used for figuring out the issues created by the hardware problem firmware level debugging is employed to figure out uh, like uh, uh, probable errors that appears in the result of uh, uh, result of uh, results of the flaws in the firmware like 
uh, when you develop the particular firmware and uh, when you uh, adopt that firmware in the embedded system, uh, because of uh, some, some type of uh, like uh, loopholes in the firmware or sometimes of uh, 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 bugs in the design of the firmware, it may give probable errors that is called as uh, firmware errors. Next one is availability, the term which is closely related to biology. Like uh, availability is referred as a non irritable variations. For an embedded system, the quality attribute availability refers to the ease with which the embedded product that can be modified to take the advantage of the new firmware or, or, or hardware design. How uh, closely we can uh, modify the existing uh, things to adapt into the new firmware or new hardware design that is called as a availability. Next one is the portability. Portability is the measure of system independence. Like embedded product is said to be portable if the product is capable of function functioning in a various environment with the target processor, target controller and other type of operating systems. The ease with, this, with the, which an embedded products can be ported onto new platform is a direct measure of the uh, measure of the rework required. <coughs> So embedded products, the term porting represents the migration of the embedded uh, firmware uh, from one target processor like for example Intel 86 to different target processor like ARM, Cortex, uh, M3 processor like these are called as portability. How you can easily port it uh, from uh, one uh, working environment to the other working environment uh, that is the measure of uh, portability. For example, the firmware is written in high level language like C with little target processor specific functions. It is very, uh, uh, like functions, it is very easy to port from firmware for, for the new processor, like new target processor. But if the firmware is written in assembly language for a particular uh, family of processor, say 86, it will be difficult to translate the assembly language instruction into new target processor. Next one is uh, time to prototype and market. So time, the time elapsed between uh, uh, the uh, like uh, uh, the design of the product and the time at which the product is ready for selling, it is called as time to prototype and market. In commercial embedded for product, like if you take commercial embedded product, the market is highly competitive and the time to market product is the critical factor. This is because there are many multiple players in the embedded industry uh, uh, who develop products of the same category like uh, you see mobile phones uh, from uh, mobile phone from different vendors. If you come up with a new design and if it takes, if it takes long time then to develop and market it then the competitor product may take the advantage of it with their product. So, embedded technology is the one where rapid uh, technology changes is happening. You know, oh, like this is one area where rapid technology changes is appearing. That's why the thing is like uh, you need to uh, reduce the time in design and uh, uh, design uh, prototype production and marketing of the product. So product prototyping helps a lot in uh, redu uh, reducing the time of market. Prototyping is an informal kind of rapid product development. So time to prototype is another critical factor. If the prototype is developed faster, the actual estimated development time can be brought down in order to shorten the time to prototype. So next one is uh, per unit and total cost is uh, one of the factors closely monitored by both end user and the manufacturer. Cost is a highly sensitive factor for commercial product especially for embedded system. Any failure to position the cost of a commercial product at a nominal rate may lead to failure of the product in the market. So proper market study is required. Uh, from a designer product development uh, perspective, ultimate aim of the product is to generate marginal profit. So, marginal profit, that is the one important thing, per, per unit and total, total cost is one important uh, factor. Next one is the product life cycle. Every embedded product has a product life cycle which starts with the design and uh, development pace. 
the product idea generation prototyping road map definition that is a road map definition and actual product design and development activities carried out during this phase like uh, like uh, the product idea generation pro like uh, uh, prototyping uh, road map definition all these things are carried out uh, during the uh, uh, product life cycle during the design and development phase there is only investment and no returns when you design a new product and uh, design and development there is only investment and no return once the product is ready to sell and it is intro introduced in the market the st stage is known as a product introduce introduction stage so see here it is the product life cycle it contains uh, like a different stage like one is design and development phase second one is the product introduction stage third one is a growth phase so uh, 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 growth phase during the initial in the growth phase during the initial period the sales and uh, revenue will be low there won't be uh, like much competition and the product sales and revenue increases with the time in the growth phase the product grabs the high market share you can see here and uh, during the maturity phase uh, the growth and sales will study and the revenue reaches its peak and the next one is the product retirement or decline phase that starts with the drop and drop in sales volume market share and revenue so these are the different uh, uh, like uh, product uh, life cycle so every embedded product has a product life cycle so that is nothing but design and development phase there is a only investment no returns second one is the product introduction stage third one is the dur uh, during the initial period uh, like uh, uh, this is the the uh, once the product is ready to sell then it is called as product introduction stage the uh, third one is during the initial period the sales the revenue will be low like initially the revenue will be low they won't be a, a much competition and the product sales and revenue increases with the time in the growth phase uh, growth phase the product grabs the i market share similarly we have maturity phase the growth and sales will be steady and revenue is the peak next one the product retirement and decline phase where it starts with the drop in the sales and volume of the market volume market share and revenue so these are the different phase now you see a uh, uh, different uh, uh, product life cycle phase like development uh, product development product inter introduction then growth phase then product maturity and product retirement so initially like uh, uh, like in uh, you see that like uh, initially uh, there is uh, in the product development uh, there is no return after that uh, you see like profit and the unit cost profit like uh, in the growth phase the profit increases and uh, in the product maturity and product retirement uh, phase the product uh, like uh, profit decreases with the time so uh, with this uh, uh, the first chapter of uh, module 4 uh, that is the characteristics and uh, that is the characteristics and uh, attributes that is functional and non functional uh, requirements for the design of embedded system is completed so we will see with the one more uh, uh, concept in the next video thank you